Patrick. Um, he's from Texas. He has um, a very unusual background um, working in biometrics um, and did some work with the government that he's here to tell you about. So please welcome Alex. So a few years ago, I, was, I walked into a pet store, and as I was going to check out, the clerk asked my phone number. Normally, I don't like to get my phone number, and I was feeling obnoxious, so I gave her the directory assistance number, 555-1212. She looks it up, she looks at me, and she says, is your name George Orwell? And I said, yes, that's me. I'm George Orwell. <laughs> um, this is actually a picture of me uh, sitting on Saddam Hussein's throne in Baghdad. In the last five years, I've, uh, I've been doing biometric work for the U.S. government, but I'm here at the 2.0 conference in the Startup Showcase, and we're doing biometrics to help identify people who can't identify themselves. Now, uh, the notion we're trying to fight here is the notion of the panopticon. And then the panopticon, it's a prison concept where you have a central tower that can observe all the prisoners, but the prisoners can't tell they're being observed. And so they always have to act as if they're being observed. And that's sort of a metaphor for the surveillance society. Now, Cory Doctorow came up with this concept of little brother, and I love this concept. Basically, it's little brother's job to annoy big brother. Not to break the law, but just to kind of confound the mechanism and, uh, and make it harder for Big Brother to do his job. Now, nothing I'm going to tell you here today is really effective for breaking the law, and I want to caution you against this. I also want to caution you that technology changes rapidly, so if you use some of this stuff for ill-gotten gains and you're in jail, don't call me because I'm not going to come visit you. Um, first, we need to talk about pixels to understand all this. The top view here is, is a view from CSI. This is a real clip. And they zoom in on a person's eyeball and pull out the whole scene from the person taking the picture. Uh, at the bottom is my sort of replication of that experiment. Um, basically, CSI is all bullshit. Okay. Now in Hollywood, uh, when they want to find out where you are, they task a satellite, it slews over, zooms in, finds your satellite, reads your license plate, tracks you, and then they send a guy in the black helicopters to come get you. But in reality, that's all bullshit too. Um, to a satellite, a pixel is about the size of a golf ball to a, a good you know, military satellite. That's not enough to read a license plate, even if it was on top of the car, which it's not. However, the police can and do read your license plates uh, in a passive mode as they're driving around. Now, there's not much you can do about the police reading your license plates. However, we can confound one type of tracking, and that's using toll booths. The toll booths track when you go and when you come, and this has been used in a lot of court cases. If you want to confound this, go through the toll booth one way, come back a different way or come back in the cash lane or whatever. It'll totally screw up their system. Now in Hollywood, uh, when they do face matching, again, CSI, uh, they, they take a, a scene from a yearbook or a website or something like that and they match a guy, you know, 80 years later, in a, or I mean, 60 years later in a hospital bed, you know, that kind of thing. Now that's, that's all bullshit. This is uh, from uh, my, my picture from LinkedIn, my LinkedIn profile. And on, on the web, they compress pictures to conserve bandwidth. Here you can see it's just a big blocky mess of pixels. My eyes are about four pixels wide. A uh, computer can't do anything with this. Can't use it for face matching, can't really use it for anything. Here's some experiments we did in trying to confound face matching. Um, the, the view on the left is the, the source image. All the ones in the top match things that you might think might break it, but they don't. The bottom are things that do break it. And basically what it comes down to is either really obscuring the eyes or breaking up the vertical symmetry of the face. Now I want to go on to, to iris matching. In the movie Minority Report, Tom Cruise's character has um, his iris is scanned from hundreds of feet away, advertisements are popped up, he's tracked as he goes throughout the city, and of course they send the black helicopter guys to come pick him up. Uh, in reality, that doesn't happen. Um, again, it's pixels. They have to be able to get enough pixels on your eyeball, so you actually have to stop and look at a sensor, or you have to be close enough for them to get enough pixels uh, in order to resolve your iris. The defeat mechanism for this, however, is not really that complicated. Basically, just uh, <laughs> cover up your eyes. You know, uh, most of the sensors are optical or infrared, and a good pair of sunglasses will, will block enough IR and uh, optical wavelengths to make it so that they can't really track your iris. So that's a pretty effective thing. It look really cool too. And uh, enemy of the state, uh, Will Smith's character has all these little GPS things uh, implanted on him, and his buttons, and his shoes, and his pin, and these allow the, them to track him in buildings and everything else. You know, whereupon they send out the black helicopter to go pick him up. Uh, reality, uh, they don't even need to bother with this. We're all carrying around GPS trackers on our belts or in our pockets, and these can and are actually activated without your consent on, on a court order. They can be turned on and turned off without you even knowing about it. So there's really no reason that they would even need to bother with this. The real GPS trackers you see here are actually a little bit bigger too, just, just so you know. <laughs> However, the, the defeat, defeat mechanism for this is, is similarly simple. You just need to block the signal. GPS signals are weak. Uh, they can't penetrate metal. They can't penetrate in a building like, like here, for example. So you know, the other thing you can do is also just you know, turn off your cell phone. Now, I've talked a lot about uh, evil things that biometrics do, but having worked for a biometric company myself, I have to you know, talk about some of the good things. 
Uh, they definitely help with capturing criminals. They help with identifying people. They are great for fraud prevention. So it's important to understand that the technology itself is not evil. It's how people are using it. And ultimately, the way we have to fight this kind of thing is through two things, transparency and accountability. We need to know who's doing what with their data, and they need to be accountable for what they're doing with it. So personally, I don't want to live in a, in a surveillance society, a big brother society, whether it's Google, Microsoft, or the U.S. government. Thanks.